Good morning, Rock Church, Facebook, brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, the senior pastor of the Rock of Our Salvation Church. Come on, somebody. Wow, good morning, you all. This is Solitude Saturday. That's right. I am broadcasting back in Chi-Town. I'm back home, y'all. I'm back home. Good to be back home, man. I enjoy myself in the ATL. Hey, amen. But it's good to be back on the grounds of Shot Town. You ought to say amen. Well, listen, we got a good word this Solitude Saturday as we will spend some quality time with God this morning. I got some things I want to share with you that's going to be helpful, Sister Sharon. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We, God, we say thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for calling us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. God, we, we want to uh, praise you. God, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy, oh God. Now we lift up our hands and give you praise. God, I ask that you open our hearts up this morning. For those some going to watch this afternoon and others may watch this evening, but God, either way, we know you're present. We ask that you'll give us a clear reflection on what you want us to know this Solitude Saturday. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Well, brothers and sisters, it's good to be on. Good to see you, Sister Queenie. But look, the title of the message today is One Way That Truly Works. One Way That Truly Works. Now, brothers and sisters, I want us to spend some good quality time on this Solitude Saturday to really look at what way that truly works. I want us to examine ourselves to be, so that we know there's only one way, okay? Man, you know, I don't know if you ever flew to Atlanta, going through Atlanta uh, uh, Airport. It is a massive operation, guys. When I talk about massive, I'm talking about massive. Brothers and sisters, you think O'Hara is big, and we know Midway is not as big, but Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Airport is unbelievable, okay? Brothers and sisters, if you don't follow the right path, <laughs> the right sign to get you to your right gate, you're done. <laughs> you're going to be lost, brothers and sisters, if you don't follow directions. That's in any airport, but I'm just saying Atlanta, oh. My, my, my. Just don't pay attention one time. And you figure that because all the people going one way, you should go that way. You're on the wrong path. But it's like that. Even if, It's really like that in life sometimes. Sometimes we watch people and they pass. We watch them take these paths. And then it's, it's, they paths seem to be appealing. We have relationships. We have folks that we talk to and they give us advice. You know, and they give us instructions. And, and, and truly, it looks good. And some things we see in life, it looks good, the path that people be on. But that path may not be the true path. There may be a path, and we can't take a path. But there's really one, only, one and only one, one truly path that we should be on. So the rabbit word is found in Proverbs 14, 12. It says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. There is a way, there is a path that appears to be right, Sister Ernestine, but in the end, it leads to death, Elder Thomas. Okay, so I want us to understand this. I want to, uh, I want to understand, like you know, be, help you to be reminded of some things that Jesus said. And I want us to know that there's some paths, but there's only one way that's truly right. I remind, I'm reminded what Jesus referred when he says in John 14, 6, he says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now we know that that's the real path right there, brothers and sisters. Okay. But there are ways that appear to be attractive. There are paths that appears to be believable, but. You know, when you think about it, there is, based on the scriptures, but it can end in death, okay? I know it's hard to believe that. So so what we have to see that a path that seems to be believable or attractive is that path 
you know, trying to tap into our flesh, right? It appears a certain way. Now, my commentary, what? listen, my commentary said this. It says, sin can seem so plausible to the man or woman who wishes to rationalize, rationalize his or her action and invade the truth of the actual motives. Not only can we fool ourselves into sinning, but we can elicit support from other sinners, either by gathering around us similar folks who we know to think as we do, or to share half truths and false motives. Wow. <laughs> wow, is that is that our reality? Yes, that, that can be a reality. Because remember what I said earlier, sometimes we watch other people choose their path and their way, and it seems attractive. It also seems that they actually you know, being fruitful in that path. But you think about scripture says there's a way, a right path that seems right, but there it leads to death. Well, anything that can lead to death, I got to believe that Satan got to be a part of it. So what I'm believing that Satan, he fabricates all type of paths, all type of path that seems to be attractive. And, you know, hey, man, in his path that seemed to be attractive, what did he tell Adam and Eve? What did he tell Eve? Huh, huh, take this. Sure it is. Right? And they know they knew what tree not to eat from. So Satan, he fabricates all the time. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. Come on now. And he also knows that if I can just entice you to look at something that appeals, that is appealing and it looks good, or if you taste it, mm -hmm, let me let me taste that. But see, here's the deal. Here's the deal how Satan actually works this out. The revelation God showed me, he, he works it out. He wants us to not to retain the knowledge of God. If we don't retain the knowledge of God, quite naturally, we won't have the ways of God. And when we don't have the ways of God, we cannot be walking on the same path of God. And therefore, we're not walking on the same path of God. Well, of course, the path that we are walking on shall lead to death. Come on, y'all. Check with me this morning. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. If you think I'm kidding, look, I want you to study out Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 35. I want you to. Through, uh, through 32. I want you to study that out today. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just so you know, this path that leads to death and what happens when you get off the real path, the one way, which is truly God. Listen to Romans. Verse, uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 24 says this. Therefore, God gave them over to their sinful desires of their hearts to uh, sexual impurity and the degrading of their bodies from one another. They exchange the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve uh, created things rather than created the creator who is forever praised. So what happened is when people decide to not to retain the knowledge of God, we can see this all over the world. OK, amen. God, God, amen. God will give you over you because you exchange his truth for a lie. You exchange the right path, the right way. For another path. Not only that, watch this. Watch what God says in verse 26. He says, because of this, God gave them over to their shameful lust. Even women exchange natural sexual relationship with unnatural ones. You, We, we understand all the LBGQs and all that stuff. Hey, man, here, here's reality, right? Verse 27, in the same way, men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed sinful, uh, shameful acts with other men and received themselves due penalty for their error. You want to know why we have all these different mindsets of people who decide, hey, hey, man, I was born, I was born one way, one gender, but I feel like uh, I, 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 I want to claim this gender. Hey, man, it ain't got nothing to do with you claiming something. It has everything to do with path you chose to be on. And therefore, God said, I tell you what, I, I give you over to that stuff. Come on, somebody. Not only them, okay, it's not only them, it's, it's other people too, other personalities. Look, in verse 28, furthermore, just as they did not think it was worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, watch this, watch this. So God gave them over to a depraved mind. Want to know why people don't do it? 
do what God really wants them to do or, or walk in righteousness. Because think about what path they've been on because we decide not to retain the knowledge of God. Watch this. Come on. So that they so that they do what they ought not to be done. You try to figure out sometimes, why am I doing this? And I know I shouldn't be doing it. Consider, have you reversed your path to go on a path that seems to be appealing and attractive? Because there's only one way. Okay, in verse 29, they were they became filled with every kind of wickedness. Come on, okay, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. Have you have you seen that in your personality, in your character? Because that's only one way. If we don't want to retain the knowledge of God, we won't be on the right path. We will have greed. We will be in malice. We will do evil things and think evil thoughts, right? Watch this. They are gossips, gossipers. You know, you found yourself ever gossiping about somebody? You know how much all the gossip we hear about Will Smith and Chris Rock? All the gossip around that. Why he shouldn't have slapped them? Why he should have slapped them? All the gossip that can come from that. Come on now. He says, "Hey, people, slanders, God haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They they disobey to their parents." They have no understanding, no love, no mercy. This will happen when we get off the right way, the right path. There's only one path. It's God. There's only one path. And verse 32 says, although they knew God's righteousness, decrees that those who do such things deserve death. Not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve those who practice them. There, there's only one path we can choose that leads to fruitfulness. The other path, the other way we choose that's going to lead to death. And not only that's going to lead to death, we're going to actually be engaged with those on that same path. Because we indulge. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you this question. Are you ready to release your faith this solitude Saturday, knowing there's only one path? There's only one path that leads to life. Well, all we got to do is keep it simple, saints. We got to understand what appeared to be right. We, we got to consider this, okay? Things that appear to be easy. You ought to you ought to ask yourself these three questions. Number one, is this the right attractive way because it allowed me to be self-reliant what are you talking about pastor rob like i just rely on myself and my power my strength this is the path i'm going to go on it's just easier that way not to follow god number two is this way attractive because it doesn't make me change my thought process or my lifestyle what lifestyle i'm gonna live okay am i gonna be in the in crowd or i'm gonna be in the jesus crowd come on now number three is this way attractive because it requires me no biblical convictions? What are you talking about, Pastor Rob? I am talking about the whole passage that Satan wants you to not declare and decree. Satan wants us to not retain, come on now, or see worthwhile retaining the knowledge of God. The more we don't retain the knowledge of God, the more we walk outside the one and truly way. Brothers and sisters, I, I, this is a solitude set. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about what was, what, was, what was said today because I think it's important that it will stop us in our tracks and then we will reverse and say, let me go this right path. Come on, this right way. I don't want to be lost because I tell you what, anything that we, we don't work hard for, we don't sacrifice, because that's, that's really the reality is, am I really ready to sacrifice this flesh? <laughs> oh, my brothers and sisters, come on now. We praise God that he revealed there's only one way, and that's his way. Any other ways, it leads to death. Father God, we praise you this morning. We lift you up. God, we thank you for showing us your word, God. We thank you, God, that you reveal to us how we get off the path that you called us on. And the way that we do that, we don't think it's worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. May that not be so. God, may you not turn your back against us. Oh, God, may we not get lost in the woods of the world. 
And God, that that it, all of the things that they're doing seem to be attractive. They seem to be happy. They seem, God, things seem to just fall in place for them. But God, help us not to be deceived by what we see. But God, but but God, understand what we ought to read and, and what we ought to put in practice that's going to lead us. Oh, God's going to lead us in the right path. And that shall not be the death path. Oh, God, help us consider our ways. I, I pray today, God, that we will deep a deep, a deep dive in this Roman 1, 18 through 32. And God, that we will see why the world we live in and why the actions that happen, things that happen, is because we walk off the path, the right and truly one. May you be glorified. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed right here in this solitude Saturday, live in Shot Town. Brothers and sisters, come on now. May we see this word and not get this this discouraged thinking that we can't change. Yes, things will change. Just get on the right path and it's going to work itself out, right? Look, hey, I'm Pastor Robert Louis Stevens. I'm back in Chicago tomorrow. I'm back to church, rock church. I can't wait to embrace you all, man. Thank you all for praying for me this whole month. I am refreshed, regenerated, and I'm ready to Preach the word of God. I'm ready to give some hugs, some kisses tomorrow. Know this, when I get back to church, I'm going to have green dots all over me. Y'all come, man, give me a big hug. Come on, somebody. But brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all for all your prayers. Thank you all for your support. Let's get back, man. And I'm hoping to get back on my routine of 630. It's going to take a little more time. I'm pushing y'all so I can get back at 630. But either way, man, I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow morning at the Rock of Our Salvation Church, 5628 West Washington. We getting it in at 1030. Come on now. Hey, keep walking in God's path. This solitude Saturday. Spend some time in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. And declare and decree that you're going to be on this one and right path. Therefore, it won't lead you to death. It will lead you to fruitfulness. Have a great day in Jesus. I'm out.